Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. Hope you're well. We are. I was trying to get my dog to come to me so I could have him say hello. But the minute I said, come here, he ran the opposite way. So he's always in this room. He's always like beneath my feet. <laughs> but he never wants to manifest his face. But he loves to hang out at my feet <laughs> during this process. He's too funny. Anyway, uh, welcome everyone. Hope you're doing well. We are. This is July 27th. Monday, July 27th. And oh my god gosh we've got so many fun things for you tonight you're gonna have to help me tonight though because um, I need your questions you'll I'll explain later I just need your questions so it's just eight we're just getting started and so you know what we do we do the whole traditional questions answers stuff so we had a wonderful time Saturday my gosh that was just way too much fun uh, we appreciate all of you who were there or watching or not there and thinking about us or whatever you were doing. We're glad to have you. All right, so should we start any questions? See, we just start right in, man. Two minutes in, <laughs> you got to start thinking. No time for the re no time for the re no rest for the weary. I guess it's what it is. That's all right. Oh, thank you, my little fringy thing. This is pattern of the month 113. You all have the pattern. And there, if you don't, there's a few more days to get it. Use your Facebook coupon code and you can get it for $9.99. $9.99. That's a magic number. All right. In the jeans video, what was the stitch used throughout? I am new to serging. I love the jeans video. Okay, so the stitch used throughout, I mean, there was a couple stitches. So I used a four thread on the serger. Anytime you're actually sewing a garment together, you use a four thread. So I used a four thread to actually make the seam. Then I pressed the seam to one direction and I top stitched it twice. And I used a stitch length of three, but you could use 3.5. Don't do smaller than 3.0, than 3 it won't look right. Um, and that was all. I only used those two stitches actually. I either top stitched, did a flat fell. It's a, it's a faux flat fell. Um, in the industry or in the factories when they make a jean, they have a machine and it actually winds the fabric around and top stitches it twice all at one time. We don't have that machine at home. So any flat fell we do has to be fake, faux, whatever you want to call it. So I surge it, press it to one side, and then top stitch it twice on top of that seam. And I think it looks really good. I don't, I think it looks pretty fake. I mean, pretty good <laughs> since it's not real. So I just used a four thread serger and then a top stitch. You can use a twin needle. I did not. I stitched everything twice. When fitting a pattern, is there any difference between taking a tuck and slashing the pattern and overlapping. Um, no, no. I mean, when you take a tuck, I'm assuming. Well, first off, just to clarify, a tuck is the same all the way across. A dart is an angle, so a dart means more in one place and nothing in another. So, just so we understand those two differences. If I'm taking a tuck, let's say that's the same all the way across, I don't need to slash the pattern. I just need to make the tuck in the pa in the tissue the same as I'm doing it in the cloth. If I'm taking a dart, same thing. There shouldn't be any slashing on the pattern going on. The only time I need to slash is when I need to open it up. So if it's a tuck or a dart, either one, both could be done on the tissue by overlapping and not slashing. I hope that clarifies, and if not, ask again and we'll get this. Was the serger you used a cover stitch machine? No. No, cover stitch machine has another thread, and cover stitch is not used on jeans. Cover stitch is used on knits. That's when, anyway, no is the answer. How many muslin should I expect to make for the perfect fitting jean? We'll get perfect out of your head. Um, perfect is overrated. It is fabric. It's realistic. There's no such thing as perfect. 
But I think for you to be happy with a gene, I would say two at the most. But you got to know what you're doing. I mean, you guys, I put that gene fitting DVD up, and a lot of you are watching the sewing, and that's great. Don't get me wrong, but you need to watch that fitting portion, the genes DVD. We went through and did the fitting. And be sure and focus on that, because there's your fitting, your fits in there. So I think the sewing's important. I don't mean to take away from that, but I do think that as you watched when I went through and did that whole sewing thing, I didn't even have to deal with fitting because I had already done the fitting prior to it and I had made up a pair in similar fabric. I tweaked it, changed my pattern so I was ready to do it. Um, I would say one pair, but I think in my experience just some misinformation or something in the process of learning, it takes a second pair before you get to the one you really like. But I think once you make the first pair, you should wear it. You should get all the little tweaks ironed out. But don't be too harsh and don't be too critical. And I, I think we do get a little harsh and a little critical. So just kind of chill back on that, okay? Um, can you do the single welt pocket out of a heavier weight denim? Yes, you can. You can do the single welt double. The single welt isn't um, any more layers than a single welt than the double welt. You know, I guess that's probably not true because when you do the single welt, you finish off the edges first. But yes, I've seen it in all kinds of fabric. If you are having problems, in that case, if you're using a 10 or 12 ounce denim, that's fairly heavy. Like I wouldn't personally make a pair of jeans these days out of a 10 or 12 ounce denim. If you like it or your husband likes it or something like that, I would. But for myself, it's just not current fashion. That 10, 12 ounce denim is pretty heavy. Um, but you might then have to go to a heavier needle because your 7010 needle might not be able to take the stress of going through the fabric. Try it and just see what happens if you're breaking a needle or break another one, then you need a heavier needle. And that's why the jeans needle was introduced years ago was because the fabric itself was so heavy. But we've got fashion denim now and it's 6 ounces and 8 ounces and you know what I sewed with was like 5 ounces. So it's a much lighter weight denim. Okay. Hi Peggy, I have made a muslin for 3200 and found that the dart closer to the center front, the dart closer to the center front, okay, doesn't line up with the center of, of the hem on my pattern. The leg twist, pattern problem or me? Well, when you say that the dart doesn't line up with the center of the hem, how can it not line up? It's a straight angle line. It has to line up. Um, the dart should, well, I mean, you know, just check a couple things. The dart should be four inches from center front. That line goes straight into the center of the hem, and that's the grain line. So when you lay that on the fabric, the fashion fabric, that's your grain. So if the leg twist when you, you know, I don't, when if the leg, <laughs> sorry, if the leg twist and you've laid it on grain and the grain is right, then that could be fabric. I mean, you've got a third variable in there that's your fabric. So rule you out. You automatically should rule you out. You don't do anything wrong. We're always right. Yada yada yada. Um, but it has to line up. The dart in the center of the hem have to line up, so I'm not really sure what you're asking there. And you might be saying something that I'm missing, but those two have to line up. It's not possible that they don't line up. All right? All right, and you guys sometimes keep in mind that so many questions are coming in, Brett doesn't get them all. So if there's a question that comes in and, and it's not gotten, we're not trying to ignore anybody. Just ask it again, all right? And we'll get it in case he misses it. Was thinking of making Shelly's dress, oh, sorry, Sally's dress. Sally's dress? There's no Sally's dress. Into a sleepless warp top. I have no clue what you're asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sally's dress. I don't have, there's Sally's pants. There's a Shelly's dress. There's a... Swing dress? I'm trying to think of all the S's. Yeah, we'll go on and we'll come back. I mean, just ask it. Can I use a silk or satin piece of fabric 
for the front of the cowl neck top and then use a knit for the back. Absolutely, great idea, great idea. Let me finish that question. I don't know if I got all the way to the end. No, I'm good, Brett. Um, can you use different fabrics front to back? We're seeing that so much in ready to wear right now where they're using, and, and the reason they're doing it is a cowl neck, um, well, there's many reasons they're doing it, but one reason they're doing it is when you do it, when you take a cowl, um, a cowl neck cannot have a negative ease because a cowl, in order for it to have the drape it has, has to have the circumference. If, it, if you take away the circumference, you take away that drape. Um, so if you do it in a woven, it works beautifully, but so many of us are wanting a garment that's closer to the body now that, because we look thinner. I mean, I get why we want it. We look thinner when we have something closer to the body. So they're putting the back in a different fabric, and often they're doing it in either a matching fabric or a solid black knit. It's a great look. It's a great look. But again, you can't get too tight or else um, the cowl won't cowl. It will, it'll pull. It'll have some horizontals to it. But absolutely, it's a great idea. I just made my first silhouette pattern. Yay! Number 105, De Laurentiis top and the fit was fabulous. I know I should know this, but what would be the best way to lengthen it for a dress? Just add to the bottom. Is that too simplistic for you all? Um, just add to the bottom. What I do is I did this dress tonight. I'm going to show it to you. I made a tank top into a dress. And what you want to do is first off figure out how much longer you want it. And if you just go and get a dress out of your closet or get something that you wear out of your closet that's the length you want it to be and measure from the base of the neck. That's the longest point over the bust to the hem and then measure the pattern. You can figure out about how much you need to add. Always add a little bit more. You know, because you can always cut off well, you can't always cut off. This was a border print and I couldn't cut off, but usually you can cut off. Then what you want to do is because you're cutting out a quarter of the pattern at one time, say center front, at right about the hip line area, measure your hips, divide by four, and make sure there's enough width there. So cut at the widest point and then blend back into the top pattern. Very simple to do. I mean, I, I just freehand it. It's very easy to do, very quick. And again, if the waist is too big, you can always take the waist in. Um, you can do it there, but make sure that you're adding enough length and then be sure you're adding enough circumference for the hip when you're going over your hip. You've got to come out from the waist on your garment, okay? But do it all the time. I mean, people say to me, why don't you have more dress patterns? We have tons. Look at all those blouse patterns we have and you simply lengthen them and make dresses out of them. So we have a lot of dress patterns. <laughs> In my mind, we have a lot of dress patterns. Um, hi, Peggy. I'm getting ready to cut out Sunny's top. That's this one. And would like to shorten it by two inches. Is it okay to cut two inches from the bottom and the base layers? Two inches and adjust the top layers one half inch each. Oh, yes. Yes. No. Sorry. <laughs> yes to take two inches off the base. No problem. But then you don't want to shorten the top layer. The top layer here. Um, that's going to be fine. Remember the whole bust point and how long? Everybody's the same from base to the neck to bust. It's, it's from bust to waist where we start changing. It's the newscaster, f you know, phenomenon. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So you only want to shorten these three sections. So that would be leave this one how it is and shorten the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So divide your two inches by those and that would be, what, three-fourths of an inch, five-eighths of an inch, something like that and shorten the, each of those sections by that much. Now just be careful when you do it though because your notches are going to get all messed up and I think when I do the top, I know I always say I don't do notches, the notches are so helpful in this top. They're just extremely helpful because they just help you line up those pieces. So just be aware uh, that if you do take it off the bottom of the base then those notches, you know, won't be as valuable to you. If you build it up from the bottom, you still should be okay. I'm just saying, just be aware of that, okay? But yes, take two inches off the base from the bottom because that's all it needs to be and then work the other pieces down. I'm making 1850 quilted jacket. How should I press the princess seams? Open flat, vertical seams press to the center, horizontal seams press down. That's a sewing, that's a pattern rule. So I don't know if it got to the sewing industry or not. Vertical seams press to the center. Horizontal seams press down. In doing 1850, the jacket, you do the front facing first and then you sew the two pieces together. You finish the front by sewing to the side and it's not lined. So I would be surging that um, 
and actually you know what because there's two layers here I would not press them to the center I would press them to the outside I'm gonna make a correction for that because there's two layers so I would press them to the side seams all right there's an exception to every rule as soon as you learn the rule you, you learn there's an exception that's okay that's all right we got plenty of time you guys I mean even if we have to go over a little bit tonight we're coming off that gene webcast and you know I think there's there's been a lot of views and a lot of questions regarding it so appreciate y'all watching the three-piece yoga pant is a little short in the crotch length but I've heard you say don't scoop what is the best way to add the crotch length okay so I'm gonna clarify crotch length crotch length is the distance of the pant from the waist through the legs to the center back center front to center back that's crotch length so you mean too short there the, I, I don't think you mean that is why I'm at is why I'm clarifying I think you mean crotch depth which is this way just clarify that and get back to me and then I'll ask that okay next question yeah when you say that the dart has to be four inches from center which leg of the dart are you measuring? Are you measuring the dart closed? It's actually the whole entire first leg is parallel to center front. It's the second, it's the leg that goes off to the side that's angled. When a dart is done correctly, the first leg is done straight, parallel to center front, and then it is angled so that when you sew it, it will appear to be straight. I know many of you, I know I get it, many of you have these darts that are go like this, but then they're crooked once you sew them. And they're not straight, and that's not the way a dart should be. It should be straight, parallel to center front on this leg, then this one that's closest to the side seam is angled. All right, so when I say four inches, both of those lines are four inches, then the angle to the side seam is the size the dart needs to be. It doesn't matter where that is. Okay? And we're call it we're clarifying. All right, I saw someone wearing a dress like Shelley's top with front layers and one solid piece in the back, no layers. If we want to do this, we just use the underlining as the pattern. Well, no, no. In Shelley's dress, in Shelley's dress, you don't mean Sunny's. In Shelley's dress, there's not one underlining. Shelley's dress has pieces and they're sewn together and those pieces make up one top. So if you want it to be one piece in the back, I went to all that work to make the back better than the front, <laughs> but if you want to eliminate that, you're going to have to overlap the pieces and then cut them as one. So just overlap the pieces, make sure both the seam allowances are overlapped and then you can just cut it as one. Okay, but there is no base in Shelley's dress. There's a facing, um, but I don't think that's what you're talking about. Shelley's dress. Shelley's dress. I, I don't think you mean sh Shelley's dress. Yeah, I'm, you guys got to get these names right because I take you literally, okay? <laughs> and so my mind goes to the pattern. There's Vince's dress. That's the cut up one. There's Sunny's top, which is the one I have on, and there's Shelly's dress, but Shelly's dress has a gather to the side, and the back's not cut up. Anyway, just ask that one again, too. Okay, we'll go back to that one. Yes, yoga pant is a little short in crotch depth. Okay, yeah, crotch depth. So you're just going to add at the top of the yoga pant, not the band. Don't make the band any wider because that two-inch wide band is um, you know this characteristic style of yoga pants so don't make that any wider but just add however how much higher you want it to come up to the top of the pant front and back add equally and that will drop the crotch down that's the crotch depth okay perfect and we can keep coming back to these questions you guys the ones that we didn't get left out or the ones that we didn't get you can come back and ask again. Okay, all right. So tonight, really what I wanted to do is, you know, I have had so many ideas busting out of my head. And because we didn't have the webcast title or we didn't have time in the webcast or many, many reasons, I really wanted a webcast that I could just 
bring all these ideas together and pass them along. In my mind, they're easy. They're great combinations of pattern and fabric together, and they're simple, and they're, oh my gosh, I think we should all be doing them. So that's really what I wanted to do tonight. There have been many times when I'm in workshops and women will say to me, how do I know what fabric and what pattern to do together and how to put them together? And I don't know that I have a, a great answer, but I do have some suggestions. And if you all will ask questions throughout tonight, that will really help me particularly on this subject because I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm well versed on teaching this subject. I don't know what's in your head, I only know what's in mine on this subject, and so it's hard for me to kind of reach in and figure out what's in yours. First off, recognize that I think wovens are really very simple. Um, we don't have a problem with wovens. I think it's our knits that give us confusion and that's because there is a, a variation of knits. There's, there's so many options with knits that sometimes we get a little overwhelmed or nervous in the process. There is a, a drape or a density in knits that you want that is a positive. If something's really lightweight, and I'll show you some examples tonight, then we've got to do something that will give it the weight that we want it to have. And there's a couple ways to do that. I'll point that out as we go. But the best thing I could think of to do was to make up lots of samples of fabrics. Fabrics are all on the site where you could look at them and say, oh, I wouldn't have made that, but now I can see that that works or oh what a good combination or you might say oh I don't I just don't like that combination the fabric is really the the winner we you know I remember when I was young I would get a picture of the pattern I would get the pattern and I would say oh I want fabric exactly like what's on this pattern cover this is the fabric I want this is the outfit I want I was really buying the pattern for the cover and then I would search endlessly to find this fabric and like always be so disappointed that I couldn't find the fabric that was on the front. And what I've learned in all these years is that's really not the way to do it. The way to do it is to get the fabric and let the fabric speak <laughs> and let the fabric really, if you look at the characteristics of the fabric, as to what will work best for this fabric. And so that's the perspective that I'm going to try to come through tonight. I recognize sometimes that's hard because we are shopping now for fabrics online. We're, we're buying a lot of fabrics online. We're selling a lot. We're shipping a lot. And I think it's the way of the future. I think for those of you who aren't doing it, kick in, get it, because there's some great stuff online and we're missing an awful lot if we're only shopping locally. I don't care where you live unless it's New York or LA. But even those places, even LA especially is limited because so much of what's in LA comes from China. And so you're missing all those beautiful European fabrics. New York, you don't doesn't get any better. So I can't no criticism. If you're shopping for fabric in New York, you're you got a good life. Um so I want to start and I've got so much in my brain, I'm not sure where to start, but I'm gonna start with bottoms. I'm gonna start I did skirts and tops and kind of mix them a little bit up. Um, I did a couple variations. We've used the yoga skirt lately, so I'm a big believer in getting a pattern and using it. Yoga skirt is wonderful, especially if you haven't sewn for a while. Any of you who have sewn for a while, it's just an hour project. It's just so quick. Manufacturers and ready-to-wear are desperate to always come up with something new and different, and yet simple with a great twist. So as I shop, I'm just always looking for all that wonderful stuff that's really, really terrific, but it's so simple or, you know, all we have to do is one little thing different. So I'm going to start with the yoga skirt. And I'm going to go to this um, pattern back here, or this the sample that I made up back here. And pull this up, and I, I, I recognize this is black, but what I actually did is I did it in a different color as well. So you'll be able to see both. I just absolutely love this skirt. You should see it on. It's absolutely beautiful. And since you can't really see the colors or, you know, what's going on, I'm going to pull out the one I did in pink. And the reason I chose this black is this black is, I think it's called the perfect knit or black knit perfection. Yeah, black knit perfection. It's just the drape on this black is absolutely stunning. So I decided for a skirt it would just be perfect because it would just make you look very slim because it has such great drape. A dress, it would work great for a dress too, don't get me wrong, but I was looking for a skirt. So what this is, 
is done just like this. It's the yoga skirt. It's cut longer and what I did is I cut it 10 inches longer. How much longer you cut the yoga skirt would depend on how tall you are. So you don't want the thing all the way down to the floor. You want it somewhere halfway between your knee and your ankle, you know, mid-calf. So you're going to just extend the length front and back. That's it. But then when you do the one side seam, and I'm going to take these pins out so you can see, when you do the one side seam, you only sew it down, and, and I sewed it to about the knee. And then you twist it up, you don't twist it up, you just fold it up, and the fold, see, that's all it is, is a yoga skirt. But you just stitch down to this section right here, which is about the knee. Then this part, goes up now all the way to the waistband and you sew it into the side seam just as if it were part of the seam and then sew it about oh two inches out into the band don't don't just let it hang from that point it won't hang as well it drapes much prettier if you bring it across a couple inches and then it has this beautiful drape to it and it's just absolutely it's just the prettiest little skirt but it's so simple to do all right, so that's the black back there. The black, it's just beautiful. It's really, really pretty. So easy enough with a yoga skirt. All right, then there's another yoga skirt idea I want to give you. Now keep in mind, you guys, as we're going along, please ask the questions now, not next week, okay? <laughs> so also with a yoga skirt, if you Google eight-way dress, I think that's what it is, eight-way dress, you will come up with this or something similar to this. This is the yoga skirt. Let me show you how this is done. This is incredible and th this I found at Nordstrom's and so you guys know it's you know not cheap and they're, they're junky fabrics. They're just really junky fabrics. Okay so I'm gonna play around with this a little bit but don't get worried about what I'm doing because if you Google eight-way dress it will show you there's videos online there's all kinds of stuff it'll show you all the different ways you can tie this dress but what the dress is and actually when I say dress I say that loosely because it can actually be a skirt so you can actually pull it down at your waist and just tie this around it and use it as um, a skirt so it is the yoga skirt what I did is I cut the I used the, the yoga pattern, same pattern. I cut it three inches longer than the yoga skirt, and I actually went three inches out wider just to give it a little more fullness at the bottom. It's totally your choice. Let me undo these just for a second. This fabric, oh my gosh, it is. I just don't think there could be anything more perfect. If you are wanting to do the whole entire garment out of one fabric then your fabric has to be dual sided. Anytime I'm using a print, especially that's you know just busy and going and crazy like what this is, I take a solid and I, I, I pair it with a solid because you can see the dress is just adorable and it has that solid kind of break to it where it's not just you know busy busy busy. All right so the yoga skirt is cut three inches longer, three inches wider on both sides okay then what I did is the band here I used the same yoga skirt pattern I mean I used my band because keep in mind your band already fits the top of the skirt so all I did here is make it wider you want to make it six inches wide the band is not six inches wide so you're gonna go six inches wide that was total including seam allowance and everything but you're gonna want to make it double the actual one at the store did not have stitching on the band here and once I put the elastic in the top here and I just put one inch wide elastic I went ahead and um, top stitched it in place because it's fl it's flimsy it, it it turns over it flips over it's extremely annoying alright and there's one seam and I put that seam at the back then there are these two long they're the ties and they, these ties are what create all kinds of differences and like I said you can watch and look at all the differences but I sewed them at the center back seam so this the skirt has a center back seam the band has a center back seam I connected it all and the ties have a center back seam 
and the ties themselves are, I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget, they're nine inches wide, they're single layer. So this is where your, your, both your sides of your ties are going to show. This is that same black perfection knit that I used in the skirt, same fabric, this fabric's wonderful. And then when you sew it into the back, you're just going to fold it to where it's two inches in, two inches up, and then attach it. So you don't scrunch it, because remember the band is only six inches wide, the tie is nine inches wide, so you're just going to fold it to get it to be narrower and then just s literally sew it onto this back band. So you can see that they're both sewn on to that center back band. So that's where all the fun begins, because you can do so many different things with it. You can create um, you know, shoulders if you want shoulders, you can bring it around to the front and create this little halter look. I mean, like I said, there's all kinds of different ways and all kinds of different things that you can do with it. What is the flower made of? That is um, the floral knit mesh. You know, I called this fabric a mesh and it might be a little misnomer. I think I did it, I called it a mesh just because it's so light, but it's beautiful. It's not see-through at all. It's, it's just absolutely perfect for this dress and they call this they kind of market this as the perfect vacation dress I would absolutely have to agree because it's so versatile if you if you made two or three of these and just took them for vacation you would have so many different looks because also what I did is I had made this a couple weeks ago you guys remember this this little kind of tunic top thing or the sweater set you know you could easily do like a little halter there and then put this on top or, or or you could do black on top or whatever you wanted and you can see you can just really change up the look take it from a dress to a skirt to whatever else so oh any height again keep in mind if you're shorter then when I say to add the three inches at the bottom you know you might reconsider maybe not adding those three inches maybe making the pattern the length that it just is it comes in the pattern so I just think it's a fun thing. I've seen it before and I really wanted a chance because it's the yoga skirt and yet it's made into a dress and all these variations and it's just, I mean honestly it didn't take me a couple hours to just whip through the whole thing. The band is six inches wide. It's the same width as the pattern because it sews to the skirt. The band the ties, I'm sorry, the ties are, are four, I didn't, I mean, I probably didn't say that, I'm sorry. The ties are 40 inches long. 40 inches long, 9 inches wide are those two ties in the back. And they're single layer. You don't want them to be double layer, they get too bulky. So that's where you've got to have a fabric that you like both sides. Because I was obsessed with doing it out of this fabric, because I think this fabric is just perfect, um, I just went ahead and subbed this particular fabric in the black because it was usable on both sides so it made it I just love it it's just too cute on it's really really cute you could even do a little jacket over it if you wanted to kind of business it up a little bit there's no reason why you couldn't do a business look out of it absolutely not okay so those are those are the yoga skirt all right a generic question no problem go for a generic question I want to make a top from mesh I plan to use Sunny's top base in two layers. Do I put the dart in both layers or only on the base? Only on the base. Only on the base. You know, I did get a letter from a gal in France. She's kind of been emailing me back and forth. And she made Sunny's top. And the error she made, she wanted me to know because, you know, I kind of take it for granted. People know this. But when you are, especially if you're using different fabrics, she used one fabric for the base and then she used different fabrics for the outside. And one of the fabrics was not as stretchy as another of the fabrics. And so obviously it didn't fit because it didn't have enough stretch to it. So when you are using different fabrics, it, they really need to all be compatible as far as how much they stretch. You know, and sometimes I think that's a given, but then it's not. We don't think about that. So she actually didn't complete her first one or she didn't have success with it. She made another one and she learned from that learning experience. She absolutely loved it. But I thought I would pass that on just in case we um, are there and you know didn't do something. The first skirt, did you increase the width of the hem? I did not. No, I only, well 
I should correct that. Sorry. As you increase the length, the width automatically increases. So yes, but I just simply took the bottom of the skirt, the yoga skirt, and because I cut it longer, in fact, I cut it like 10 inches longer, you can see that it automatically increased the width. So I just took these lines straight out and then measured both the same, the 10 inches on both sides, and then connected it. So it did increase the circumference at the bottom. But I like it, especially as it hangs up here, that extra, especially with this fabric. You need a fabric that's really nice and drapey because you don't want a big wide bottom with a fabric that doesn't drape straight. That would, you know, that's a perfect example of not good fabric pattern combination. Um, I surged. I surged. But I did leave all these edges raw. All these edges are raw. There's nothing on them because, again, it's a knit. And when you go back to this dress, I didn't even hem it. It's got great drape. You can. You guys don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was almost, I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell you that because I was afraid she didn't hem it. It has nothing to do with a webcast or anything. That's the way I would wear it. That's because the original dress was like that. And I like the... I don't know, I just like that kind of feel of the whole thing. So I left it. All the ties, none of those edges are finished. Just as you cut, cut carefully. You can't even tell they're not finished because they're never shown. They're always tucked under or something. So it really is, you could do a rolled edge. That's actually what I was thinking about doing. I think a rolled edge would be nice if I did anything. But I really like that it's just left and not finished. The ties, I just said I did not finish the ties. No, that's okay. I did not finish the ties. What kind of fabrics will work for the A-way dress? Rayon, interlock, slinky, all of those. Your ties have to be two-way stretch. The band only has to be one-way stretch, but if, that's, if these have to be two-way, these have to be two-way because they're going to be going all different directions. So the ties need to be two-way stretch. You could simply do one color dress and different color ties. I mean, you guys, I'm going to unleash you because you now know there's a million variations of what you could do, and I am sure they would all be adorable. This dress is adorable. It's just really, really cute, and I hope you have lots of fun. It's my little gift to you for July. <laughs> it's my little Christmas in July, but anyway... It's my little gift, so I hope you enjoy it because, again, it's quick and easy to make. All right, so then I wanted to make another skirt, but I, I bought a skirt a little while ago, and what I love about this skirt is that, honestly, <laughs> you're going to think, don't take this wrong, it feels like I have nothing on. It's so lightweight. It's so cool. You guys know we're here in Dallas, Texas. We take great pride in how many 100-degree days we have, which is ridiculous. But every day the weatherman goes, and we had another 100 day, and we're all going, Arr. but anyway. So it's, it's really nice to have comfortable, cool clothes. So I did the skirt, and I just, I absolutely love this. It was perfect for what I wanted. The fabric is online, and it is a polka dot. But this is a very, it's, it's definitely dense, but it's very lightweight. It's almost like a t-shirt knit. It's that lightweight. So when you're using something that that's lightweight, you've either got to have a lot of layers, or you've got to have a lot of fabric. You've got to do one of those two, because otherwise there's just not enough fabric to perform well, if that makes sense. So this is 100% cotton. So what I did is the 2850, the skirt was perfect for it. Um, 2850 has a lot of panels. And instead of putting any kind of invisible zipper when my mother was alive, um, I, I made this skirt for her. And because she was in a wheelchair, it was easy to just leave out the invisible zipper and do elastic. So I just cut every single panel just a smidge bit bigger because there's 18 panels. And then I fold it over the top and put an elastic casing in it. And she loved this skirt. I, I can still I can still see her, you know. She'd get up, she'd get up and she'd kind of swish like this, you know, and her skirt would go all over and everybody in the nursing home wanted me to make them a skirt. And the answer was quickly no. But I have loved this skirt for a long time. The original was Michael Kors. It's a great skirt. So what I did is I shortened it. So this is the pattern piece. It's twenty eight fifty. It's called Michelle's skirt. The original was a Michael Kors. I've loved this skirt since day one. I turned up five inches at the bottom. I wanted it to be more knee length rather than longer. So you can see that it's that's all the length it is. 
The original pattern has you sewing it and then roll edging so the wrong sides are together and your seam comes to the outside which I love the look but I decided to even simplify it more than that and all I did was a fourth thread surged on the outside of the skirt. Um, you don't really see that as much as you just see the black and then at the top of the skirt I put a little fold over elastic and so I just took the elastic measured it to the waist that I wanted it to be and stretched the fold over elastic and put the fabric in and then of course you've got a little fold over elastic across the top and so it's just literally this pull on skirt it is so light it feels like you have nothing on I absolutely love it and then of course just with a little black t-shirt a little black you know whatever it's a home run or or even since this is a black and white this could easily be a blue a pink a yellow you know some contrasting color anyway but that's for 2850 and that made another skirt all right okay then I did a pair of pants and I wanted to I, I just love these pants and we were at ASG conference a week ago Has it only been a week I guess it has uh, boy a lot's happened maybe two weeks anyway it doesn't matter a lot's happened in a week um, a lot of people had on great pants you know all kinds of funky pants and they were prints and you know we're in San Diego and so it's sunny and it's great weather and um, so it really calls for great funky pants I think is what it does anyway I love this fabric I, I don't remember what I named it it's on the side it's a beautiful knit um, it's really wonderful it and so what I did is I used 3100 the reason I used 3100 is because you already have this pattern it was um, done in a little package and lots of you have 3100 so it is just a gathered pant and then it has overlays. Ditch the overlays. I left the overlays off completely. And I made this a wrap pant on the side. So that means what I did is I took the pattern and I extended this out of the side seam three and a half inches. So there's the side seam. I went out three and a half inches. I wanted the pant to hit me again halfway between knee and calf. So I came up six inches off the bottom. So I took the pattern. I turned up six inches and then as I added my three and a half inches over here I curved this to the seam so I made this big long um, curve that went from the hem the inseam of the hem went out here and came up way over here and I did that both to the front and to the back that's it that's all I did then when I sewed it you want to ha actually do the inseam first you want to do that inseam first because then I'm going to hem the side seams and you start hemming over here hemming over there all the way and then back up and then you're ready to wrap it okay so here's the pant and you can see that this is where it's wrapped so the back overlap the front overlaps the back you always want the front to go to the back typically rather than the back to the front the back comes to the front underneath and then the front goes to the back on top and then you can just secure it in one or two places with a great button, a great fastener. Really what I wanted to do was these things, these little um, drapery rungs. And I wanted to do a couple black because I felt like the holes would be perfect for just securing it so they wouldn't be really heavy. Buttons to me seemed okay, but maybe a little out of place where these rungs were just perfect. My problem was that I went to get them and they were sold out and I thought no 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 I don't have time to mail order these so anyway I did not get them I had gold ones but I want black ones and I thought a black right there maybe one or maybe two on each side would just be absolutely perfect kind of almost with the theme of the whole airy type dress or, or pants but anyway I love these pants they're adorable again a simple black top and you've just got a pair of pants that just feels like it's not even on your body just light and easy okay this one the skirt is just one layer yeah it's just one layer it's just there's 18 of them and so when they come down in a nice fabric like this they really just give a real pretty effect but the, the fabric is heavy enough you can't see through it especially when it's full you wouldn't want to wear a fabric like this tight on your body because it's just too skimpy it's too thin I guess is the best answer 
This isn't. This is just a little knit top I stuck on. It's not any pattern. I just wanted you to give a look like 195 or 211 or something along those lines. I ran out of black top, so I just grabbed something else in my closet and threw it on. All right, easy enough for the pant. All right. All right, then we have a pattern, a fabric, that is on our site, and it is absolutely adorable. They are skirt panels. And I find these in New York, and every time I find them, I buy them right away. But a lot of people just don't know how to use them. So I thought I would kind of show you how to use them tonight. I mean, not really show you because they're so easy. <laughs> you just basically need two panels, and then you put them on and do the side seams, and you just keep making them smaller and smaller until you get what you want. And then I just put fold over elastic again at the top. The bottom, I just surged and left. You don't even want to try to turn it under. I guess you could if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. You can see it's such a beautiful skirt. And the fabric, it's conditioned. It has all these pleating in here. It's really beautiful. You could make the eight-way dress out of this. You could add a band at the top and make this the dress. I was toying between, you know, what I wanted to do with that. But this has, I don't know, I, I just decided to do it this way. But this would be awesome for that eight-way dress. You could absolutely do it. It's the right length. It's perfect. But for a great summer skirt that's really cool and really easy, this could easily go into winter because it's the right colors, but it's light, it's silk. So it's really beautiful. Okay, then I wanted to really utilize the fabric, and we have a couple of fabrics that are just dynamo fabrics. They don't need anything except for us to just not um, you know, to like make their beauty come out. So this is, you guys, I don't remember all these fabric names. Probably should have written them down before I started. This has a beautiful border to it. And so, and I've said to you all many times, if you're going to do a complex fabric, do a simple pattern. And for the most part, you know, those rules can be broken. But for the most part, that's really true. And you really want that to happen. So this is Aztec dual border okay so they're actually the fabric is wider and it goes on to be a border up here as well I didn't need that length I just wanted the border at the bottom so it was perfect for the tank dress the tank top you can use pattern 500 pattern 514 it doesn't make a difference and you can see that this is just really a great dress so simple to do all I did was turn under the edges I could use fold over elastic here if I wanted to I purposely did it sleeveless because again when you have a print you want something that stops that print and what I was going to use to stop this print in this particular case I did a little black jean jacket it's a linen jean jacket but you could use so many things get a great belt this is a wrap around belt and the texture of the dress and the texture of the print and everything really works nicely together so very simple to do the fabric is terrific it's extremely comfortable on it is just easy 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 and when you go to lengthen that tank dress again you just figure out how much how longer you want it um, and then you measure your hips divide by four and make sure you come out wide enough for the hips and then just blend right back into the side seam are we okay with that? Okay, so right here, you know, this is this is my three inch and a half inch. The three and a half inch comes back to the back, and the three and a half inch comes to the front here. So you've got this much overlap right in through here. What you don't want when you're wearing the pants is for this to unwrap because that's you okay <laughs> so one fastener of any kind right where these cross or where they stop to uncross you can see they uncross down there at the leg so one fastener at that point would be appropriate so that's where I was going to put the circle grommet was so that it would keep this modest without any problems of unwrapping and yet be really functional and decorative as well that was the goal Both legs are the same, yes. Yep. You could do them different, but I did them the same. 
And the other thing I thought about after I did it is I thought it'd be really fun to put like black fold over elastic all the way down the leg just to have a little black trim. I think it would really pull it into the top a little bit more. Not that it doesn't look fine here, but I just, for some reason, I could visualize that a high-end garment would have that black trim on it. it. It probably wouldn't just be finished with surging and turning. All right, so then I want to show you this. I absolutely love this. Um, I saw this in uh, Saks. I was in Saks some time ago. And I've loved it, and I've been sitting on it, and I've been so excited to do it. I just really like this. This is just a blouse pattern. It's pattern number 600. I didn't change anything. I did the collar. I did the front tab. I did everything just like the pattern calls for. I did it sleeveless because that pattern was, I mean, the, the sample was done sleeveless. And you can see there's just a long sleeve t-shirt underneath. So it's kind of like a vest. It was cut long. This is cut all the way to the knee. So I added, to make mine to the knee, I added like 12 inches below the blouse. But when you go to sew it, it's only sewn to the waist. The side seams are only sewn to the waist. And it's tied in the front. So you get this beautiful, and of course this silk to me is just off the charts gorgeous. It's just so beautiful. It's beautiful to work with. I don't know what the name of the silk is, but you'll find, you can see it online. Or we'll have a link to it after the site. We'll have all the fabrics on there, and we'll have a link to it. But it's absolutely beautiful. It's perfect for summer now because you could do it with a pair of capris or you could easily take it into fall and do it um, with a pair of jeans or skinny pants or anything else. Anyway, it's only tied, it's only stitched into the waist and the side seam here and then the front is just tied. And I just absolutely think it's the greatest look. I think it's so contemporary. It's so flattering because it covers and yet it gives us that really contemporary look by just tying these fronts. I'll untie these just so you can see. All that is is the front of a blouse and they're just not stitched to the side. So you want to use a fabric and that's why I chose silk. Some knits will get um, bunchy. So be careful of your fabric because once you tie it you don't want it to get a big bunch right here in your tummy. So I use the silk and all I did was fold it over one time. I didn't actually tie a knot or anything. I just lapped it over. And you can see as it laps over, it makes a beautiful collar lapel. It gives a great vertical look. And it's just all right there for you. Oh, I just love that. I think that's so pretty. <laughs> so you do want to be careful that the fabric um, that if you're using a silk, a lot of silks are white on the back side. Be careful that you can use both sides. Most silks you can use both sides. This, there is a difference on the back, but both sides are still really beautiful to where if you had it on, even if you saw the inside, the back side there, it's still just really, really pretty. So I just felt like this was dressy but casual and just something different than knits. We use knits a lot and I love knits, don't get me wrong, but I really like that that was just a little more upscale. And it was not inexpensive, just for the <laughs> just for the record. It was not an inexpensive top. Okay, then I have one. Is there any questions? I have another one I want to show you. You know, I started this out. <laughs> I said I'm going to show you four things you guys can do, and the four turned into I think like ten. <laughs> but anyway, um, again, you'll have to watch it over and over and just take notes. But all the information's here, so hopefully you can do what you want with the ideas that are given. All right, so the next one I used pattern number 519. It's called Mia's Ruffled Top. And obviously that's just a front and back. It's a very simple pattern, no sleeve. I didn't, I mean, there's a sleeve in the pattern, but you're not going to want a sleeve. Um, what you're going to do is the ruffle, you're going to cut it wider. So this is, um, I just love this white terry cloth that we have. I think that's what it's called. Again, we'll have a link for it. And I love this fringe. Obviously, you can see by what I have on that I love the fringe, but I just love the fringe. So this was a top. It was extremely expensive. And it, I looked at it and I thought, my gosh, that is Mia's ruffle top. That's exactly the pattern we have. Just the ruffle was cut longer, you know, in some parts. If you note, and I'll, I'll point out the differences to you. What I did is I didn't cut this part so you could kind of see the differences to where this is what it looks like when you first sew it on and then you're going to go back and cut all this up and end up with this. Several things I loved about this. First off, 
I love covering my arms and in this particular case you could cut these ruffles up just part way. It's longer in the front than it is. Notice, first off I lengthened the top. So I added, um, I added eight inches to the bottom. That made it long enough that I could wear like a black pair of leggings with it. Or I mean white if I wanted to, but you know, you could contrast or match either or any color. White goes with everything obviously put a little belt on under it just to kind of give it a little bit of interest. Don't go too crazy with the belt, but just a little belt. And then the ruffle itself in the center, I actually added 11 inches because the ruffle is only this wide. This just really makes it so contemporary. So I added 11 inches in the middle and then I only added 6 inches at the side. And then just kind of cut at an angle. You can see here and that's why I left it for you. You can see where I just cut it from the longest point to the shortest point, but that's still six inches where the original pattern um, is only, well, let's get out these rulers. The original pattern is only six inches wide. So I doubled it, that's 12 inches. And if this is six inches here, I added 11 inches, that's 17 inches. So I'm just gonna show you the back so you can see that's what it looks like. And then you start cutting. Now make sure that when you do this, you've got to have a two-way stretch fabric because the stretch has to go around, but you've got to have stretch going up and down, otherwise these won't. I hope you all have tried this. I just love this. But again, there's so much of it out there and I, there's so much I don't like, but man, I really like this. Make sure you use a fabric that you like both sides because you will see both sides with this white. This white was perfect for it because it had two-way stretch, both sides were good, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's really pretty. A touch of silver or gold, either one works really well and it just is really flattering. Alright, so that's 519 Mia's ruffled top. No. the Well, the 8-way top, this actually is the waist. Technically, this is the waist, but there's no elastic through the body. There's only a one inch el elastic at the top. And then I stitched a little, um, it looks like a little border, but if, this, if it's your skirt, it becomes at the waist. So technically there is elastic at the waist, but there's not like the yoga skirt where you have the two inch wide elastic through. No, there's not. Isn't this fun? I told you, you guys, I've had so much fun. These are all such simple little ideas. Um, get a good base and just make a few changes and they just sew up really, really quick. A blouse without sleeves, everything. Everything sewed up really quick. So the idea was to kind of get you going and have fun. And, and a lot of these things will transition now in the summer and then they'll, they'll easily transition through September, October. All right, how we doing? No, I'll fringe it. I want it fringed. I love that fringe. I just think that fringe is really pretty. I'll fringe the whole thing. I just wanted you to see kind of, if the fringe is fringed, I just felt like there was things you couldn't see about it. So I stopped fringing so that you could see the angles. Um, you know, just kind of how it looked prior to it. It's a big difference. It's a big change, but I love, I think because it's a little bit heavier fabric, I really like the lighter fringe on top. And I love the fringe. I think it's so, you know, two months ago I said I hate fringe and now all of a sudden I'm fringing everything. Not everything, but you know, I hope I'm not fringing everything. <laughs> two yards was probably the ongoing thing. Um, with this skirt, the yoga skirt here, two yards worked. Um, two yards here. The blouse, because this particular silk is narrow, I had to use three yards. Just a heads up with that. Just watch. Um, just watch your width. Like in this case, the blouse case, because I left off the sleeves um, and I made it longer, the two offset one another. So it would probably be the same amount of fabric you would use if you were to make a blouse, period. Not really anything longer. Um, this was the same amount because again I had no sleeve and that sleeve is kind of big and once I left off the sleeve I could get the added length of both the ruffle and the top. The skirt that I did here, this is two panels. This is adorable. 
I mean, this skirt is so flattering on. It just, it, it's really dense, so it hangs really straight. It's adorable. Um, this was a yard. This is a yard because the border is so wide that you only need a, you only need a, a yard to do that. This was, this is going to need two yards because this is so full that one yard, it almost takes up the whole width just to get one length and you've got to get two. So that's going to take two yards and this is going to take three yards because the skirt, even though the panels are shorter, uh, there's 18 of them. It doesn't look like three yards on the body. It doesn't feel like three yards, but it'll take three yards. But it, it has it on the back. It doesn't have it back on the pattern because I think the back of the pattern says five yards for the longer version, but because you're cutting off a lot of that fullness, three yards will do this little skirt here. Okay, what is the shape of the bottom of the ruffle? The shape of the bottom of the ruffle on the Mia's top you did. The shape, it's not a shape, it's just a straight angle. So I, on the, if we go back to the pattern here, this, this is the pattern piece and it says center front and center back. At center front and center, so you can see it's the same size, it's just the length of this equals the neckline. So I just added 11 inches here, I added six inches here and then drew a angled line to connect those two added lengths. I mean you could curve it if you wanted to but once it's all you know cut into fringe you're not, you're not going to really see a hard angle anyway so it's not going to make it's not going to matter. Oh the fringes I cut them well what I found is I like the narrower ones better which means you have to be careful because I like to pull them so that they really look fringy. <laughs> so they're going to be about a quarter inch wide. About a quarter inch. When you get to a half inch, it's too fat. They don't. I don't think they look good. So keep them narrow. Are we good? I think we have a trivia question. Anybody interested in a trivia question? It's fifty dollars. We'll just skip the trivia question. We'll ask it. We'll ask the trivia question in the chat. I think I forgot to say that, but I'm always supposed to say that. You guys, I do want to tell you, on our Notions page, we got so excited because I have forever used these rulers. Like this ruler, not this exact ruler. I had in college. I've had this ruler that long. I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's just a one, 12 inches long, 1 inch wide. This one I use at the sewing machine. It's, you know, if I'm doing 1 inch flies or whatever, I use this one. This is uh, 18 inch long, and it's 2 inches wide. So our curvette man, the guy that does all of our curvettes, I took him these rulers and he made us a little ruler set. So all three of them are all done. And they're on the website and they're $20 for all three. And I paid a lot more finding the rulers <laughs> and individual shipping on all the rulers because you can't find all three of them in one place. So anyway, those are brand new. We'll put them in the email tomorrow. And we're really excited. And we did the same exact printing is the Corvette. They're so pretty. They're really pretty purple. Anyway, so that's a new product we have. And we're so excited. We said we did the jeans so along and we hit 10,000 and we're already at 10,300. We're over 300. But anyway, so everybody's got to tell two, no, we figured three friends. Everybody needs to tell three friends about the site so we get 25,000 subscribers and then when we do 25,000 subscribers, we'll do another sew along of some kind. You get to choose the sew along you want. How's that? We won't pick it this time. All right, so here's the trivia question. What faux holiday is often celebrated in July, especially in the sewing industry? What faux holiday is often celebrated in July, especially in the sewing industry? Anybody get it? Oh, you just asked, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I forget there's a delay, you guys. Okay, so Christmas is not the answer. It's Christmas in July. So Regina is actually the winner. Regina, if you'll email me, Peggy, at silhouettepatterns.com, I will send you back a coupon, and that coupon code, you'll enter it in, and it's good for $50. 
All right, ladies, we are going to say good night. If there's, unless there's any more questions, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you sew. The goal is to have happy sewing. Is that a deal? I love to sew. I sat there as I sew, was sewing these things thinking this is so much fun. And they just turn out so cute. You guys will love them. There's not a lot of work to them, not a lot of fitting. Just do it. Anyway, if we can help you, let us know. We appreciate you all being out there. Have a great week. And we'll see you in two weeks. We'll be back. And we'll do the August POM variations. All right. Good night. Happy sewing, ladies. Bye.